Arctic Shipping Development uh, Prospects Evaluation uh, Nuclear Aspect Fleet in the Northern Sea Route. The idea is to identify the demand for nuclear icebreaker fleet services uh, by estimating the shipping and cargo flows uh, on the Northern Sea Route. So, um, the data and um, methodology um, of my research. This research was uh, supported by a unique database of potential investment projects in all sectors of Russia's economy, and in particular infrastructure development projects in all regions of Russia till year 2020, and whenever it is possible till year 2030. The database has been collected in the course of structured requests to the federal authorities, regional authorities, and business in Russia. So, uh, I counted only for those investment projects that are about to start and have strong commitment from business and uh, government, not like wishful thinking. So, and I consider this problem of uh, nuclear icebreaker fleet and uh, shipping on the Northern Sea Route within the framework of the overall strategic planning in Russia. So, um, the research methodology comprises of qualitative methods using case studies and uh, data from um, my database on investment projects. Um, the second was mapping and geographic uh, analysis techniques based on mapping software. And finally, quantitative methods. I had to use a gravity model for export and import flows um, in international trade to account for export and import potential. Mm -hmm. So, on the next slide, on the next slide, uh, we see um, the indication of uh, major investment projects. So, of course, um, the Arctic zone of Russia has a lot of uh, mineral uh, resources. Um, and energy resources, but again, here I indicate only those projects um, that will definitely start till year and will be in full operation till year 2020. Um, so, um, as to oil and gas resources, of course, the most uh, important part is on the Himal Peninsula. It's not using okay. Um, the hydrocarbon reserves of the Yamal Peninsula on the north is about 50 trillion cubic meters and up to six, 65 million tons of gas will be uh, supplied to the Asian Pacific uh, markets after the construction of several um, LNG plants. So um, the Arctic zone is also very famous for non ferrous metals, ferrous metals and other ore minerals. For example, about 85% of nickel, 60% of copper resource, and over 95% of platinum is concentrated in the Norilsk uh, industrial region. Second, uh, complex ores in Nova Zemlya. Um, and finally, ore minerals in Tamar and uh, northern Yakutia. Um, I also accounted for other types of uh, infrastructure in Russia and uh, Northern Sea Route uh, cargo load will intensify owing to new railway siding to White Sea, Barn Sea and Kara Sea. There is only one exception when uh, railway transport route might be a, a sort of competitor to the transportation via uh, Northern Sea Route. Um, on the next slide, we see the composition of the nuclear power tight fleet in Russia. So, on the left side, we indicate 10 nuclear icebreakers. Uh, there are, on the right side, there are also special vessels that are absolutely necessary to treat um, used uh, nuclear materials. And uh, one of the special sea, uh, ships called Rosita was uh, recently constru uh, constructed and put into operation. So it should be noted that uh, some of the nuclear breakers in Russia are outdated and um, they will be taken in operation very soon. 
That's why it is very important to construct um, new nuclear ice breakers if Russia intends to develop uh, energy and uh, other in investment projects in Russia. At the same time, we still have to supply goods to the remote areas in Russia, so-called uh, northern supply. People are still living there, and it is the only way to supply even food, um, sometimes uh, special energy resources, to the remote areas in Siberia, Far East, and so on. Uh, so, um, in accordance with the government plans, uh, there is a finance to construct uh, one nuclear icebreaker ice um, in year two, 2016, and uh, till year 2020 we will have three new nuclear icebreakers slated for delivery in year 2016, 2018, and 2020. So. Here we have an indication of annual freight traffic activity on the northern sea route. So we can see that there was a drastic decline in uh, cargo flows in the 90s and um, in the beginning of uh, last decade. Uh, the major reason was uh, a drastic decline in international transit and decline in the northern supply to the remote areas. So, uh, at the bottom of this table, I have some estimates for future uh, cargo flows on the NCR. I must admit that they are significantly higher than previous estimates. Like researchers maybe five years ago estimated the cargo flow in year 2030 maximum as 42 million tons. Now we have 100. So that's why we need to take, uh, to take care about infrastructure. Uh, we need the nuclear as breakers, and we need all supporting services, um, including navigation, remote sensing, um, all data and uh, navigation facilities. So, um, again, on the next slide, um, I show estimation for uh, potential cargo flow. On the first two lines, it is mentioned that five years old estimates by UN specialists will exist, five or six million ton a year in the eastern direction and two or three million ton a year in the western direction. Now the estimates are higher also for international transit, not just for uh, overall cargo flow on the northern sea route. So <coughs> the transit routes through the NCR are quite attractive for foreign cargo owners. They have great potential to attract uh, transit cargoes in the Arctic. So there was a pilot uh, trial um, in August 2010 when the Arctic ice class um, tanker, the Baltica, uh, just shipped uh, over the NCR and delivered uh, 70,000 uh, gas concentrated uh, from Murmansk to Ningbo in China via the Northern Sea route. So, on the next slide we have uh, requirements um, for economical usage of the NCRM. Um, there are two important points. Uh, on the one side we have operational perspective, um, exactly ice route optimization system. On the other hand we have administrative perspective, regulation and fee structures. Uh, during the past few decades, um, fee uh, for nuclear icebreaker food services were extremely high. Uh, we had serious budget constraints due to transition period to market economy, and uh, nuclear icebreaker fleet had to just earn money to continue operations. So the fees were significantly and significantly high, and it became even inefficient for business to use nuclear icebreaker fleet services. That's why some companies oil companies and resource companies started to construct um, high ice class vessels just to ship on the NCR. Of course it is good in terms of development perspective, but um, I interviewed those companies including Norris Nickel and they still confirm that even today when they have uh, high ice class vessels, they still need uh, nuclear aspirator fluid 
because uh, from previous presentation by Mr. Peterson, we noticed that there are still some areas where nuclear icebreakers are absolutely necessary. They are also necessary just to provide safety and in some case of for rescue operations. Thank you. Thank you. 